Spotlight. I'm Rachel Barenbaum, author of A Bend in the Stars, and today my guest is debut author Andrew J. Graff. His new novel, Raft of Stars, just dropped. It is so amazing. It's terrifying. It's heartbreaking. It is a page turner that I couldn't put down, and I'm so excited to have him here. Andy, tell me, what is your book about? Well, thanks so much, Rachel. Uh, it's a wilderness adventure, uh, at the heart of which are two boys nicknamed Bread and Fish, and they think they've, they take things into their own hands, and it forces them to flee into the wilderness of uh, the fictional Marigami County in the north woods of Wisconsin, and they're pursued by casts of adult characters, and uh, they head down river. So when you say they take things into their own hands, um, there's actually a pretty dark reason for that. Can you uh, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so uh, Bread, one of, the, one of the two boys, has an abusive father. And Fish has been his friend for about two or three summers. And uh, it comes to the point where he becomes tired. He, he asks for help. He prays for help or tries not to pray for help, as he says and eventually realizes that he's the help being sent. So he turns back to his friend's house instead of going home to his grandfather's. And that's where, that's where things take, a, take a, a drastic turn. So um, I loved, on your website, you did a little video and it, uh, you took us into the woods, I guess that inspired this book or the setting for this book of your, uh, what you called your home. And it was just so helpful for me to understand this book and the setting. And um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the woods there and what they mean to you. Yeah, thanks so much. I, I was happy to share that. I'm always happy to share uh, that river in any way. So I, I grew up at the end of a dead end road in the township of a village um, in Northern Wisconsin. And I lived uh, about a mile or so from that, that stretch of river that I show in the video. So I. I grew up there and we hiked there and we went fishing there and we spent a lot of time there. Later in life, after, um, after a tour with the United States Air Force, I started guiding whitewater rafts on that same stretch of river and got to learn it in a new way. So uh, I, was, I was happy to spend time there while writing this manuscript. It was a way for me to just spend time at home. I just wish that all authors would now do that video. <laughs> like, this is what inspired me, right? It just, I felt like I was so much more connected to the book when I saw that. Mm -hmm. um, also, you just sort of threw in this detail that I was going to ask you about a little bit later. But um, I have to say that the Venn diagram of people, right, who have done tours in Afghanistan and then gotten an MFA, uh, there's not a crowded intersection there. Um, and uh, when I saw that, I was just blown away. Can you talk about that transition from being in the Air Force to writing? Yeah, I was always a, a reader. I didn't necessarily have in mind that I wanted to try uh, writing books. So I was a mechanic. I was an aircraft mechanic in the Air Force. Uh, you know, I, I, I grew up, I'm a first generation college student, non-traditional college student. And um, I just wanted to go be an aircraft mechanic, you know? I was, I was hauling furniture during my first job out of high school and there was a recruitment office in the same strip mall. And I thought, that looks like more fun. So I did that and I transitioned back home. And uh, eventually I landed at Lawrence University in Appleton, Wisconsin. And that's where I began trying to tell, my, tell the story and began trying to write. So it was a, it was a, it was a great transition for me, primarily because I got to sit under trees and read books for four years, which was a welcome break after Kandahar, Afghanistan. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine, to be honest with you. Um, so one of the things that I really loved about this book, going back to the book itself, right, is that you really explore a friendship between two boys who are on the edge of adulthood, right, trying to become men, for lack of a better word. Um, and we don't, I don't see many books about that. Can you talk about that friendship and what that meant to you in the book? Mm. Yeah, I, I was really interested in, in that, the, you know, the, the 10 years old seems like a special age. And I was thinking back to my old friendships uh, and we used to do the same sorts of things. We used to light off firecrackers and silos as they do here. We used to, you know, build jumps for our huffy bikes and we used to triumph and worry and we'd get in arguments and fights and we'd make up all in the same five minutes. And that's what these boys seem to do 
so they were interesting characters to, uh, to, to watch progress. And one of the other major questions for me in the text is, you know, are we, are we taken care of in this cosmos or this wilderness? You know, are we fathered well, so to speak? And uh, that's a question these boys have to ask too. Right, about parenthood, about what does it mean to be a parent, right? Or a father, I thought you're also addressing. Um, and we're, we're, you know, I'm starting to see more and more books about questioning motherhood. And I wish we would see more about fatherhood. Right? Mm. So I was happy to see that there. Um, in, have people been talking to you about that, the, that role of parenthood, fatherhood, as the book is you know, approaching pub day? Yeah, it's been wonderful to, to hear uh, readers respond to the book. And that's just been, what a joy, what a blast, you know? Um, it, I mean, Rachel, you know what it's like to publish a book. I don't yet, you know, so this has been wonderful fun. And uh, one review that I really appreciated, they, 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 they spoke about the need for um, books that show it's okay to be male and, and feel things deeply, you know? Uh, so I, I appreciate that sort of feedback. He was actually a high school teacher and he said, we need, we need books that uh, boys will read one and we'll teach them that it's okay to emote. <laughs> you know? So uh, I, I hope this is, a, this is a fun adventure and not just for young adults, of course, but um, for any age. But that's absolutely, absolutely true. I mean, I struggle finding books like that for my teenage boys, right? Books where they can see what it's like you know, to go through that. So I think it's great. So we've talked about the amazing and strong male characters in this book, but there are, of course, also strong female characters. Can you tell me about them? Yeah, I would, I would love to. So the, uh, the boys are pursued through the forest um, by the boy's grandfather and a sheriff, but also the boy's mother, Miranda, and uh, Tiffany, the, the gas station attendant in the fictional Claypot, Wisconsin, who is an aspiring poet with uh, purple hair. And those are some of my favorite characters in the story. And they actually became, once I got to know them, uh, some of the most capable out in the wilderness and on the river. Fish's mother, Miranda, has a really fierce sort of faith that eventually borders on recklessness. And I loved her character because once I knew that there was a son lost in the woods, somewhere there was going to be a mother and no tornado or no storm or no river was going to stop her from getting him back. So those were fun to write as well. All right, let's shift to some more publishing questions, more specifics there. Could you talk about what was the hardest part of writing this book? I think for me, the hardest part of, of writing this or, or anything is probably that second draft sort of stage. I think, I think getting things down, as Anne Lamott says, is plenty of fun, right? You just write it, you write it quickly, you're telling a story and you think, ah, oh, some of that's great. Yeah, yeah it's going so, so well. And then you go back and read the second draft. And that, that for me is where things get really daunting. Um, you know, uh, and I realize just how much work still has to be done so and how hard was it to get this book published well yeah i you know i've been i've been working toward a debut novel now for well over a decade you know i have like sock drawer manuscripts that got all the way up to representation by agents and then no editor picked them up so um wow uh i i would say that whole story was there were it was plenty hard you know <laughs> there were plenty of dark nights of the soul and, and, and crying in my pickup truck on the highway and all kinds of things like that. But um, it came together finally, you know, so I'm, I'm thankful. Thank you so much for admitting that because I think so many people see, you know, the shiny, beautiful cover wrapped of stars and you're gonna get so much coverage and excitement when it pubs. And yet there was so much behind it, right? You have many manuscripts in the drawer. I mean, yeah. thank you, yeah. right? Yeah, this was a messy pile of paper on my desk for, for five years, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm so glad uh, that my agent picked it up and enjoyed it and was able to place it with Echo. I, I couldn't be happier. I love how you keep looking at it too. It's like, it's real, <laughs> it's real, <Yeah. laughs> it's real. Yeah. There's nothing like holding the book. No, there's not, but it was pretty magical to open up the first box of, of galleys and to open up the first box of hardcovers. Uh, yeah. well. 
So do you have any advice for new writers? Yeah, I would, I would say, um, I think my advice for new writers would be to weather that, that, that time period well. You know, my old writing professor told me when I graduated from, from Lawrence University, he said, Andy, you've got about 10 years. This will probably take you about 10 years, you know? And he was talking about writing and failing to write and getting better and the whole, the whole, the whole show. And my initial thought as sort of a, 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 a bucky 20 some year old was, you know, well, maybe it took you 10 years. It's gonna take me maybe two or three, you know? And it didn't. I graduated from my writing program in 2009 and this was sold in 2019. So I took every minute of those 10 years. Uh, so keep the faith, you know, find good mentors and, and keep the faith. What a great a, a professor you had. What a great piece of honest advice. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I still go to him when the answers matter most about, about uh, writing or any other, any other facet of life. Amazing. Andy, thank you so much for joining me. I loved Wrath of Stars. <laughs>